Uh, Grimaldi, to hear again. I so move. I you want have to 12 minutes if you wish to use it. Uh, I'll be sharing time with uh, Senator Humphreys, and yeah. I want to welcome the, uh, the Minister to the Chamber and indeed to thank her for her indication of support for the Bill, uh, which is very, very much appreciated. Uh, okay, here we go. I just want to read into the record of the House. Um, uh, words written by Tom Johnson almost 100 years ago, I think at this time when today we recognise the 100th anniversary of the, um, the granting of the first votes to some women, as has been pointed out to me, in, in 1918. Um, the fact that we go through this revolutionary period of reflection about where we have come from and where we are now, I think it's not. Uh, it, it's, it, I think it is very important of us to reflect on the ethos that underpins those times. And I speak of Tom Johnson because he was the first leader of the Labour Party uh, in this Oireachtas, and he was somebody who was asked to pen the first democratic programme of the first stall, uh, as the Labour Party did not seek election in 1918. It was given given to him. Uh, the honour to write it. And he said, in his words, it shall be the first duty of the Government of the Republic to make provision for the physical, mental and spiritual well-being of the children, to secure that no child shall suffer hunger or cold from lack of food, clothing or shelter, but that all should be provided with the means and facilities requisite for their proper education and training as citizens of a free in Gaelic Ireland. It was the children that Tom Johnson turned to first. As you know, um, as you know, Minister, our current legislation requires of children to be in school between the ages of 6 and 16. Unfortunately for many children age 4 or age 5 who are in our school system, their attendance record which obviously isn't of their own making, their attendance record which is obviously the, um, within the power of their parents or their guardians, that is going to have a huge impact on their potential uh, to reach their own potential in later years. Re reading through international research on children and their, uh, and their abilities at the earliest age, there's a 1995 report, which I often quote to Hart and his Risley report from 1995, that says that your average three-year-old from a welfare-dependent family has on average one-third the oral language capacity of a three-year-old from a rich or advantaged family. A poor child basically has 400 words, age three. A rich child has about, if a child can be rich, age three, 1,200 words. So even at that earlier stage, a disadvantaged child uh, has a huge gap which they have to make up. So I view illiteracy, I view uh, educational disadvantage of the TB uh, as we view the TB in the 1940s and 1950s. It was said in the 1940s and 1950s that nobody should get sick because they are poor. And Similarly, with illiteracy, people will always have difficulty reading, but should, they should never have difficulty reading because they are poor. And effectively, what we are dealing with with four and five-year-olds who have chronic attendance difficulties, often they can be sick, and there's reasons for that, and any medical professional will back up the family and, uh, and deal with Tuesday in that regard. But if you are poor, and if you are in despair, and if you are in a family which is is struggling to function because of any amount of stresses and strains, because of addiction uh, or because of poverty, it can be the last thing on your list of priorities is to bring a child uh, to school. So what we want to do is to ensure that if you are four or five and you are vulnerable and you're at the beginning of your educational journey, that that educational journey will be defended uh, by the state, uh, by TUSLA, uh, by the political system and by legislation. Uh, often, unfortunately, families do not understand the power of education. They don't understand the importance of being in school every single day. I know as a former school principal in an area of acute disadvantage that often Mondays and Fridays fell by the wayside. Often half days were days where people took full days off. Christmas can be difficult. Uh, summer can be difficult. And it's not because parents don't love their children. It's not because guardians don't love their children. It's because education has failed too many parents, failed too many people, and it's not something, when they look at school or education, they look at something that is very, very negative. And they would rather, in some instances, be friends of their children rather than parents. And that is completely understandable. If you look at what you have helped to roll out, Minister, in terms of the ABC programme, which we started in the last government and you've helped to, um, to robustly defend and to, and to roll out again, is programmes across acutely disadvantaged areas, uh, which is empowering parents to understand the power of of oral language, the power of literacy, the power of school attendance, the power of diet, 
that can actually prepare a child for life, just as uh, the scheme in, in Darndale uh, is termed preparing uh, for life. So what we want to be able to achieve in our bill is that four and five year olds will be uh, prepared uh, for life. And when we have children who are regular attenders at school, if they are not regular attenders at school, it should be within the capacity of TUSLA uh, to intervene with that family, but not in a negative way, not in an aggressive way, not in a way that would undermine the parents, but in a compassionate way, in an empowering way, in a way that ensures that those parents uh, and those guardians can ensure that those attendance patterns are improved. Because as you could appreciate, Minister, if a four or five year old is missing 60, 70, 80, 90 days, at age four or five, well then fast forward 10 years, you can be quite sure that those attendance patterns will be as bad, uh, if not worse. We should be striving for the eradication of illiteracy, the total eradication of illiteracy. There is an educational psychologist in, in, in Western Bartonshire in Scotland who I met called Tommy McKay, who speaks in those terms. Unfortunately, our ambition of our language has not been strong enough. We've spoken about, talking about breaking the cycle. We've spoken about delivering equality of opportunity in schools. But when you look at literacy in that way and, and strive for the total eradication of illiteracy, well, I think that has to be our goal. And certainly attendance at school for four or five-year-olds, uh, boys and girls across the state, is something that we need uh, to strive for. As you said yourself today, Minister, uh, under 50% of four-year-olds are actually enrolled in school, but the vast majority of five-year-olds are. And what will happen is that if a child has chronic uh, attendance issues, that the principal at the school or the teacher is effectively powerless uh, because of the legislative um, issue of only requiring to be in school between 6 and 16. So with the best will in the world, a teacher, a principal can only go so far. So with our amendment, any child who is enrolled in school age four or five years of age will come under the auspices of the Educational uh, Welfare uh, Act. And I think that will be a positive move. I very much appreciate um, the fact that the government is, is supporting the bill uh, and will facilitate the bill. I appreciate that across this house there is a wide agreement that this bill is, is a good bit, uh, a good piece of work. Um, effectively, I suppose, as we remember, as we recall, as we look in the into our past and we look into our future, it has been our children, uh, through the history of the state, that we have let down time and time uh, and time again. And it is, as happens internationally, uh, education is the great liberator. Education is um, the one thing that will drag a child out of poverty. In fact, they say the most revolutionary act that a girl can make anywhere in the world is to pick up a book. That's why Boko Haram are kidnapping schoolgirls in Nigeria. That's why Malala um, was, uh, uh, her life was, was uh, threatened um, with a gunshot because she was on her way uh, to school. A 10-year-old girl with a book is probably the most dangerous thing in the world. And that's what we need to encourage in, in Ireland, is that four and five-year-olds, children with books, uh, can have the ambition to change the world. But if they're not in school every day, if their families are not in the position to send them to school every day, if they feel that, they, uh, that, that education is down the, the list of priorities, well then there has to be an agency who can empower those, those parents and those guardians to bring uh, those children uh, back to school. And TUSA is that uh, agency. I understand that TUSA will say that they are um, under-resourced in terms of educational welfare officers. I can appreciate that. Uh, and we can have that discussion about the number of educational welfare officers that we have. But let's defend the rights of four and five-year-olds to their education, if they're enrolled in the school that they want to attend. And as you know, Minister, yourself, primary schools across Ireland, regardless of their quibbles and complaints about, about resources and, uh, and various different things that will, will always be needed more, they are the most wonderful places in, in the country. You cannot walk into any primary school in the country and not be uplifted because of the professionalism, because of the love, because of the care, because of the, just the buzz uh, of, of what children bring uh, to any place. So that's what we're trying to achieve, and thankfully we're achieving that together, Minister. We very much appreciate uh, you uh, supporting this bill, uh, and uh, we appreciate um, that this bill soon, with your support, uh, will become law, and that four- and five-year-olds uh, across the country will have their educational um, uh, rights uh, protected. Thank you.